What's going on guys, Bob Roach from RoachTechnology.com here with a quick Hackintosh tip all about Ivy Bridge. Now if you're thinking about building an Ivy Bridge Hackintosh or maybe you recently just ordered your Ivy Bridge parts, you're going to be totally out of luck unless you have access to a real Mac or a Hackintosh. Now you may be scratching your head, scratching your chin, being you know, why is that? Well. Let's start off with Snow Leopard. Snow Leopard is the last physical copy of the OS, you know, Mac OS X, that Apple has sold, meaning that you can just go to a store and pick it up, or you know, you can order it. It's not a download only, and the only way that you can download the latest OS that are compatible with Ivy Bridge, such as Lion or Mountain Lion, is through the App Store, which you cannot do on Windows or you know, Linux, Ubuntu, whatever you have, whatever have you. Uh, you cannot get those unless you're already running Mac OS X. Now, if you have a friend that has a Mac or maybe even a Hackintosh, then you can just access the App Store through there, and that's where you can get your Mountain Lion, create your Unibeast drive, and you'll be on your way. So before today, that's what the situation was. If you had an Ivy Bridge system, it was a salute and a good luck because unless you had access to a, you know, an existing OS X installation, you could very likely not get your system up and running. Now, I'm very uh, pleasantly pleased to tell you guys that Tony Mac has come out with a solution for this today, and it's called iBoot Ivy Bridge. Now, in case you guys don't know, the first version of iBoot was back in the days of good old Snow Leopard before Lion was even out, and this is how we were able to boot that retail uh, Snow Leopard DVD on our PC and actually you know, get the installation up and running and installed. But like I said, since iBoot and really Snow Leopard altogether did not support Ivy Bridge, this method simply would not work. Now, Tony Mac has specifically come out with this version for you guys with Ivy Bridge systems. Now, I don't have an Ivy Bridge system, so I cannot show you this firsthand, but I'll just go ahead and walk you through just the slight differences that are there. Now, what's nice about this method is that it's basically identical to part four of my Hackintosh from start to finish series, other than this iBoot Ivy Bridge. And the only difference here is that it's just a different ISO to mount on a bootable disk. And all you have to do to do that is go to the Tony Mac download page, which I have queued up right here conveniently, and boot, come down here to boot Ivy Bridge, or rather iBoot Ivy Bridge. Right now it's just version 1.0, 8.03 8 megabytes, very small download. So we just click, and once you're logged in, you'll be able to download. And that would download all nice. And now what you want to do is burn that ISO to a CD to make it bootable. Now, if you're on Windows, I'm pretty sure you can actually just right-click that image and click burn, and it'll burn it for you. In OS 10, the way I prefer to do it is, you know, I'm, I'm sure if you're on OS 10, then you probably won't be, you know, needing this anyway because you're on an existing OS 10 installation. And there you go. But just for, you know, just for the sake of the argument here, let's go ahead and just click this. Go ahead and wait for that to mount, and simply right-click and then burn. Now once that's burned, all you really need is you know the computer, the OS X compatible computer that you want to get up and running. You need that iBoot CD as well as the uh, Snow Leopard DVD. Then all you want to do is click the annotation you see right now and that will actually take you to part 4 and simply just watch and learn from that video and you will be all set. Now once you're on Snow Leopard, all you have to do is simply download the combo update. I would recommend 10.6.6 .6 because a lot of things changed in 10.6.8. That's where this, the first Sandy Bridge CPU support came in and things just got kind of weird. So just for the sake of this method, I would just go with 10.6.6. .6. Go ahead and update your Hackintosh to that, get it booting. And then once you have access to the App Store, simply just log in to, with your Apple ID, download Mountain Lion, and then follow the video you see on the screen right now. That's my Hackintosh from start to finish installing Mountain Lion video. And from there, you'll have a bootable Unibeast drive, and you'll be all set with Mountain Lion. Now, I know a lot of you guys are going to be asking, dude, where do I get Mountain Lion? I've been searching on Amazon, I've been searching everywhere I can, and I cannot find it for less than like $75 to $100, even though that Apple sold it for $30. Well, the good news is that off the books, Apple still does sell Snow Leopard, but you do have to call them. It's not something that you can do online, at least I don't believe. But uh, I'll go ahead and put, I'll put this uh, Apple form, uh, Apple support communities in the description, this link right here. And there's actually a number that you can call, and then you'll, you'll actually talk to a real person, and from there you can actually order Snow Leopard for $20, which is actually $10 cheaper than it was. So there are still ways to get your hands on Snow Leopard without paying an astronomical price. Please don't pirate it. It's really not worth it. I mean, if you're going to build a Hackintosh and not buy Apple's hardware, at least you can do is buy their software. Because after all, it is great software and it is very extremely well priced. So that's all I have for you guys. I'm sorry I couldn't really walk you through it, but I feel that my part four will pretty much give you guys everything you need to know other than that initial burning the right ISO image. So thank you guys very much for watching. I'm at CPUKin on Twitter. Also, be sure to check out RoachTechnology.com and at RoachTechnology on Twitter. Big thumbs up to Tony Mac for this. It's going to help a lot of people out, especially those that this is their first OS X system. They have never had access to a real Mac, and now they don't need it. So let me know your guys' experience on Twitter, down below in the comments, on Roach Technology, and I'll see you guys in my next video.